Riding the Classroom Struggle Bus with Angela Searcy, the You Are Not My Friend Struggle. Well, if you work with children, I'm sure you've heard this um, statement. You can't come to my party. Me and my head? <laughs> so your birthday is like 11 months away, kid. <laughs> These kids are crazy. When is that time? <laughs> but also me, after I take a deep breath, behavior is communication of an unmet need. Sometimes when you hear these statements, children could be frustrated, tired, even hungry. I also need to remember that all behavior is communication. And often, children are just communicating the skills I need to teach. So here are some ways that I do that. First, you want to make sure that you have a positive climate to actually facilitate friendship skills. Just having positive words as children walk through the hallway, or even um, this is in the cafeteria where they write words like hello, smile, have a great day. Even writing on tables and student desks, um, statements such as what new friend are you going to make today? Or who are you going to talk to? Uh, you know, these kind of statements really support an environment that is facilitating friendship skills. In addition to facilitation, we can also set up the environment in other ways, such as helping children to understand foundation skills that support friendship. Little things like masking table, uh, I'm sorry, masking tape on tables help children to understand their space in relationship to their friend's space. Masking tape can be really helpful, but also as a teacher, I've gone to carpet land, I've gotten carpet squares, they're just scraps that they've given to me for free because I work with children, that help children to know, oh, I'm sitting on this carpet square and this is my space. So tape, contact paper, hula hoops, all these things can facilitate children with these foundation skills that actually support them into creating an environment that helps them to be friends. So whether you use tape, whether you use um, hula hoops, setting up the environment to support them. If you haven't taught it, honey, don't expect it. So again, these are more ways to teach children about what's too close. Or are you a space invader or a space protector? Um, helping children to understand the difference between family, um, you know, uh, and the way that you interact with them as opposed to friends or an acquaintance. Children are still learning what's too close or what's just right. Don't forget, especially in the beginning of the year, children don't even know the other children they're in the classroom with. Just because you throw a bunch of children in the classroom doesn't mean they're automatically going to be friends. It takes work for that to happen. So putting children's pictures on blocks helps them to begin to know the other children in the classroom. Uh, them coloring another child's picture in a self-portrait. Uh, these are toddlers. Helps them to be able to understand other children's faces and their names. Children have to learn how to be peacemakers instead of peace breakers. So um, I know these pictures look very, they actually got them from Pinterest and they look pretty fancy, but literally just having children write down or you writing down what children say about being a peacemaker or a peace breaker, it doesn't have to be fancy. You can graph it, um, that you can incorporate uh, math skills, science skills, Making the housekeeping area or dramatic play area a friend detective agency is a great way to help us not only facilitate friendship, but help children with writing skills, help them with, um, you know, organizing the attributes that help someone to be a good friend. Well, all of those are social studies, science, math. You don't have to sacrifice academics to support social emotional skills. Now, another idea is just helping children to be able to deal with the challenges of friendship. That's why they often say, I don't want to be your friend. So the five steps for when your friend is bugging you. Take a deep breath. Ask them to stop. 
tell them how it makes you feel. Now, this isn't a one-time thing. It's continuous. And make sure you have these visual prompts throughout the classroom. The tattle phone. Helping children to um, get out their challenges and their frustrations in a productive way. And what a great way to incorporate writing within um, these challenges. Now, if you haven't heard, I'm sure you've heard of tattling, but have you heard of tootling? Tootling is the opposite of tattling. When you give someone a toot and toot their horn. So encourage children, and it's, I mean, they're going to tattle anyway, but help them to tootle instead and write down good things that their friends are doing. Support them in understanding the difference between reporting an emergency or tattling when it's really something, you know, that is just trying to get someone in trouble as opposed to reporting something where you're just trying to keep someone safe. Very young preschoolers don't know the difference. If you teach this difference, huh, all the time that you're going to save just by having a peaceful classroom. Speaking of peace, where's your peace table? Are you facilitating children to have peaceful resolutions to their challenges? Do you have peacemakers or peace helpers as a job in your classroom? Oh, no. Oh, no. You are not alone. There are children in your classroom that are already great peacemakers. You can make this a job and then rotate it so children can understand how to keep peace. Thinking about peace table rules, talking, listening, facilitating it with books and literature, all of the I don't like, I do like, make sure that you have discussion prompts next to the peace table with books and visuals. Um, and some of these things can be made up. I know, when you hear visuals, you're like, mm, that sounds like work. <laughs> no, it doesn't have to be a huge amount of work. If you have the children draw the pictures, it's not going to look perfect, but it is going to be meaningful. Again, here are more ideas for helping children to take their pictures, cut them in half, and then they instantly have puzzles and helping them to know their friends and make funny pictures of their friends. Setting out areas for them to learn each other's names. Uh, all of these ideas are supporting children just to get to know each other. Once you get to know each other, then maybe you'll be friends. So sharing, you just can't tell children to share and think it's going to happen. So using literature and activities to support this skill. One of my favorite books is Should I Share My Ice Cream? It's a nice one where an elephant tries to figure out elephant and piggy. And the elephant is trying to figure out if he should share his ice cream or keep it to himself. Well, the ice cream ends up melting, and then Piggy comes along with ice cream that he shares. Once you read the book, actually do a large group or a small group activity where you create little ice cream cones. And children have to, this shows a ball, but you can put anything within these little ice cream cones to re represent the ice cream and pretend to be piggy and elephant, and then they share, just like piggy and elephant. Now, no, just doing this activity will not, you know, make sharing perfect within your classroom, but it's an opportunity for children to practice good social, emotional, and friendship skills. Just like they practice math skills and, you know, like a math bingo, or they practice reading and pretending, they can also practice social skills. Make sure that you're creating activities and embedding friendship skills throughout your entire day. So here's the art activity. Well, and it's also a science activity as well and social emotional activity. So yellow and blue make what color? So you have to have one friend have one color, another friend have a different one, and mix, and two friends have to come together to mix them to make a new color. Have the whole class do it. Do it in small groups. Do it in a large group. Have fun and help children make friends. Now, when you're pairing children together, sometimes you can have children just pair together on their own, or other times you can be much more intentional. 
So maybe pairing a child with higher social skills with a child with lower social skills. Uh, you know, they can learn from each other. Yes, of course we can do friendship art. So thinking of more activities where children have to have a friend to create something. Another way to create great friendship skills. Again, sometimes children, especially if they have a conflictual relationship, don't want to be friends, even if you pair them together. So sometimes I purposely pair children who um, have conflicts so they can work them out through this activity. Sometimes I don't. Depends on the day and how I feel and what the children are feeling and what they're doing. But how are you going to repair a relationship by separating children? It actually repairs a relationship the more you bring them together and teach them how to work together. Lose a game, honey, but you win a friend. Children are just beginning to understand how games work. And sometimes they can act like sore losers. They need to understand over time that, you know, the saying that you lost a game, but you won a friend. Win a friend by saying good game. So teaching children that everyone should have a chance to win. Understanding another person's perspective. This is really difficult for a three-year-old, for example. Three-year-olds are very egocentric. So teaching friendship skills over time helps to support that development. Make sure your environment is set up for success and teaching, well, I have Tim, but all children new skills. The buddy table is a great way to show the steps, one, two, three, and four, of being a friend. This is complicated for young children. And you want to break down something that's really abstract into something that's concrete. Teaching children with puppets. Having them role play what it means to be a friend or what would you do if this happened, someone knocked over your block. Sometimes it's not intentional and children don't know how to respond to that. These photos are from Head Start um, Center for Inclusion um, and I had a buddy table when I had my classroom. You think, but I don't have room for a buddy table. Do you know how small my classroom, <laughs> classroom is? No worries. When I had a sharing center, all I had was a blanket and a highly preferred activity for two children. The highly preferred activity, for example, in the fall was a pumpkin, a pumpkin, golf tees, and one hammer. And the only rule in the sharing center was that you had to share. Well, once they saw the golf tees, the hammer, and I had like little goggles, they were really excited about sharing. So making sharing something that they want to do, not something they have to do. Classroom jobs. Again, you are not alone. Thinking about skills that children need to learn, um, children that have high-level skills, children that need more support, and helping children to help children. <laughs> So creating jobs in the classroom such as the greeter, the problem solver, um, the line buddy. You know, we have line leaders, but what about children who struggle with just getting in line? So they may need a line buddy. Be careful because when you create line buddies, again, sometimes it can make even more problems. None of these strategies work instantly. Some of them do. Some of them don't. What you have to do as a teacher is you need to work the strategy, not the other way around. So you have to, in working a strategy, you really need to think about what child fits with this child. Um, how does this make sense for my classroom? Um, will it lead to more conflict? How can I, you know, make sure that it doesn't lead to more conflict? Or what will I do when the conflict arises? I get it. I've been a teacher. Sometimes strategies just create more problems. But if you're intentional and you think through it, then you can work through those problems. Strategies don't work. Honey, people work. And it's all about how you work the solution. I've, I've had children who engage in, have you ever had this? Where children are engaging in, um, you know, a chase game. And then it becomes a fight. <laughs> so, so sometimes clarifying with a visual who's being chased 
<laughs> and why can support children who, for example, don't have good language skills, um, who are, uh, for example, children who speak other languages, children who are nonverbal, they also want to engage in good play experiences. Play is good when the adults around children set up the environment for it to be good. Someone who anticipates what's going to happen and plans for it. And this is a great thing that would actually go in lesson planning. Lesson planning isn't just something you have to do. Lesson planning helps you to think through challenges, problems, and plan for them. Here's some more pictures from Head Start Inclusion. And these are pictures, again, of classrooms using buddies, um, children helping each other at lunchtime. And, and this one here shows a visual. And the visual is one child is nonverbal and the other child has verbal skills. So therefore, the child who's nonverbal can actually engage in a conversation with the child who's verbal by pointing at the picture. Again, children can't think of these things on their own. They need adults to make up for what they lack internally. And those are problem-solving skills. So therefore, think of all the problems in your classroom, and now think of how you as the adult are going to help and support children um, to deal with those problems. Another buddy table. So this one has a twist. In this classroom, they use a buddy table picture or visual in the classroom, but it's also sent home. Ha ha! I know, I told you it was a new twist. So parents talking to a preschooler about being a good friend, it doesn't quite translate to what should happen in the classroom. Infants, toddlers, um, two-year-olds, preschoolers, honey, they're all about the here and the now. So when a parent is at home talking about school, it can be a little confusing or they may not be able to transfer what a family could be saying at home to the school environment. Um, this is very abstract. So making the abstract concrete, by sending this home, and this can be pictures that you create, these could be drawings that the children make along with your words, it doesn't have to be fancy, it doesn't have to be tight, it just needs to be legible, and it just needs to be fun and interesting. Sometimes if the children make the pictures, or if you have pictures of children in the classroom and you have permission, you know, to share that, then you could send that home um, with you know, some pictures of maybe your classroom. Um, children are going to be much more invested in sharing something or keeping something with their parents if they drew it on the picture. And, and so would parents. Parents love to keep their children's drawings. So, yeah, they may toss away your newsletter. Mm -hmm. But if the children's drawings are embedded within the buddy table, um, you know, experience or the buddy table visual, they're more likely to keep and read something that's created by their child instead of you. Here's a slide, and this slide comes from the Center of PowerPoint, from the Center on Social Emotional Foundations and Early Learning. They have some great kind of lesson planning ideas on how to support friendship skills. So putting names in a can and letting children draw names to make something special for a friend. So it doesn't mean that they, children are different stages. Some children are ready to do art together. Some children are just beginning to make art and then give it to a friend. Keep in mind you want to individualize for the stage children are in. You may have a child who's more of a three-year-old, either in age or development, they're more like three years old, cognitively. And they may, may need to make something for a friend as opposed to with a friend, okay? So think about where children are and what fits for your classroom. Pair up children to plant seeds of friendship. Create a friendship hands tree. I showed one earlier. Compliment links are where children actually, you have links of paper and then, you know, children can cut them and you can write down the compliment like, you're, thank you, please you know, or something, and that encourages children to 
complement each other. See, just like challenging behavior can become contagious, oh yes, you know, it can become, com become contagious. You're not my friend. You're not my friend. Or you can reverse it and make giving compliments contagious. See, it's all about what you pay attention to and what you endorse and facilitate in your classroom. See, I'm going to take a pause right now, and I want you to say out loud, see, I'm in charge. Okay, yes, yes, you, not the kids. Now, the kids may learn some powerful ways to get control, but you're in control. So give back that control. Focus, right, on the positive. And once you focus on the positive, that's what the kids are going to focus on. There's books about friendship. Oh, this is one of my favorites. Have you ever wanted to get children to write their names and it takes forever and they don't want to do it? What a great way to facilitate children wanting to write their name with autograph books. So they actually can autograph a friend's book, and it's just a, you know, you can make the books with, um, it doesn't have to be expensive books. I know, again, what you're thinking, no, it doesn't have to be spirals. You can make a book with post-it notes. You can make a book, simple, right? <laughs> you can make a book with paper and use Ziploc bags so it, you know, it doesn't rip up. Books can be anything that you wish them to be. Art that takes two. Music and songs. They love to sing. So if they can sing about Beyonce, they can sing about friendship. And you don't need to find songs. I mean, you can find songs at songsfortteaching.com. But you don't have to. Children love it even if you make up a song, right? So get, get, get a friend and go play. Get, get, get a friend. Who will you play with today? Get, get, get a friend, right? So just making a song, right, about, you know, how to be a friend and what to say. Movement partners, dancing with a friend. Right? What another great way to get children. Hey, the best way to dance. It's with a friend, with a partner. Okay. So what is CSEFL? Well, it's the Center on Social Emotional Foundations for Early Learning. And I love the website. When you go to the website, it's vanderbilt.edu slash C-S-E-F-E-L. You'll actually, when you go to Practical Strategies, you will see um, a book list which has several books about being friends, activities called book nooks, and pictures about how to facilitate social-emotional problem-solving and friendship skills. Well, I hope you got lots of ideas. Please hit the subscribe button and share with your friends, parents, grandparents, or your school. I have lots of playlists about lots of strategies. I also have a whole series called the Behavior Eliminator, where we behavior plan changing you, changing the child, and changing the consequence. If you want to get this behavior planning worksheet, please um, definitely go to my store. I have a store on Teachers Pay Teachers where you can actually download a whole behavior planning form to be able to support challenges such as, you know, the struggle bus <laughs> um, example. TeachersPayTeachers.com, and then my store is Angela Thursday's Simple Solution Store. Lastly, I love presenting uh, and providing consultation with school districts and early childhood programs. Please don't hesitate to contact me. Also, feel free to connect with me. I'm on social media. So feel free to like um, my Simple Solutions Educational Services page where I share tons of strategies. Um, my actual personal Facebook page, or Twitter or LinkedIn. Thank you for joining.